Tools for Techs, Cycle Analysis Basics. This short video has been requested as we get many new members and viewers weekly coming to our sites and uh, social media. The, um, the whole basis for my work uh, has come over 45 years of study. It started out back in 1975 when I read a book uh, called Profit Magic of Stock Transaction Timing. Our analytic approach, based on all this, is quite different from most other market analysts. Uh, thus, we use some different language. Uh, many people are unfamiliar with the terms we use and, of course, the concepts. And uh, we look for um, identifiable market rhythms using this particular style. Essentially, we call it the heartbeat of the market. And we use that information to project in not only price, but in time, which makes it significantly different from how most other uh, analysts do a look at the market. Uh, this video that we're doing is, is actually quite basic. Uh, we're going to look at definitions and the very beginning of development of this style of chart analysis, though I'm going to get a little more complex uh, as we move forward. I'm going to take you through the different stages of uh, using this type of cycle analysis uh, on your charts uh, from a blank chart uh, all the way out through some more involved uh, pieces of information that are on the chart. You will we'll see me do that uh, in just a few minutes. So we're going we're gonna to look at these basics. Uh, for uh, most of you that are, have watched us that maybe uh, I didn't know many of, of these aspects of psychoanalysis or people that are just for the first time uh, seeing the type of analysis that we do. So what I want to do is, of course, get your buy-in to the fact that there are cycles absolutely everywhere in the universe. This uh, slide actually comes out of our cycle analysis workshop, which is, um, uh, I'll tell you a little bit more about that as we move forward uh, in this video. But you can see in here some variations of cycles, uh, how they appear in the universe. Of course, the top left is the Earth uh, spinning around on its axis, and it does cycle uh, in 24-hour uh, cycles. So the length of time uh, that it takes it to go completely around its axis, which is a circle, uh, is uh, uh, 24 hours approximately. Of course, there are different, there, there are slight variations to the way it moves around on its axis, uh, and that causes changes in the season. So if you look on the bottom right, you can see as those seasons change, that beautiful graphic from BBC Earth, as you see it going through the different seasons, uh, and that's uh, cycling through the four different seasons. Uh, in the top middle, if you look at that, you can see what we see is the water cycle. Uh, and uh, wa water, anywhere you start in there, uh, you just keep going around in, in that cycle as uh, water comes out of the clouds and, and rain and in the form of rain. Uh, it accumulates in surface water, it evaporates, it goes back up into the clouds and goes through the whole process again. So that's, of course, a cycle. You can see all the cycling around the sun and then, of course, the cycle of life and death uh, that you can see depicted in that flower that is just coming over now and uh, the seed comes up and life comes back. So uh, uh, cycles are really everywhere, everywhere in the universe. And why shouldn't they be in stocks in the stock market? Well, we believe they are totally. And of course, our work really uh, has been developed around these uh, basic concept of the fact that uh, there, there are uh, repeating patterns uh, in throughout the universe and repeating patterns as they show up in charts. So we're going to move forward in here and start to look at some definitions and uh, get uh, a little bit better understanding of, of what we're doing. Uh, and uh, the definition of a cycle is it's a series of events or processes that happen in the same order and are repeated. It comes from the Latin cyclus and, and Greek kuklos both meaning circle. So you saw that as I talked about the circle on the axis of the Earth. 
uh, it is a complete repetition of a wave where a point of observation returns to its origin. You see us looking at that all of the time when we look at our charts, where we look at uh, time references and uh, coming back to the uh, end of that cycle at that specific time reference. Uh, it often does it at also a point on the chart, uh, but that I'll show you is far less often. But it is a complete repetition of a wave. So the definition of cycles as we use them in stocks and futures and indexes is that it's, it's based on a perception of cash flow. We talk about that all the time, that what we do is a visual depiction of that. And as the money moves in and out of a security. So there are many different ways that people look at cash flow, uh, many indicators to do that with, uh, and uh, cycle patterns are really based on that. Traditionally, the phases of the cycles are the accumulation phase, the markup phase, the distribution phase, and the markdown phase. This really defines institutional actions as uh, money starts to come in uh, and then the prices start to rise as the money comes in and supply is removed. Uh, and then as it gets up near the high, uh, the holders begin to distribute it to people that are coming in late to the game. Uh, and then the weaker hands and uh, whatever forces uh, cause money to start to flow out brings that markdown phase. And as slim, it's a little bit different. We define them a little different. They're, they're similar and they give us a little different information. Uh, we have a rising phase and a peaking phase and a declining phase and a bottoming phase. It's similar as uh, that, uh, the way that traditional cycles are looked at, um, but th the conditions give much more information and are very visual. Uh, we, we have a lot of people that ask me about our style of analysis, and I always tell them it is an art form. Uh, you have to be able to deal with that part of your brain, and if you have a very engineering mind uh, where things are absolutely precise uh, and very mathematical, well, you may struggle with this type of analysis. This, it's, these phasing are less about the why that you might see in the traditional phasing and more about what it, what it means and using that information to project forward in time and in price. And I'll show you how we do that as we begin, we begin to move uh, forward. So what I'm showing you here is what we call the ideal cycle. Uh, what makes a cycle ideal is that it peaks or crests right in the middle at the halfway point as you can see. So there are lows or troughs, and uh, each of those cycles start and end at, remember, the point of origin, as we discussed. That is the bottoming area or the low. So bottoming phases occur at those points. The rising phase uh, is when uh, it starts to come off of those bottoms, and rising phases in the ideal uh, are, look a lot like the declining phase in the other direction. The amplitude of the move is the same in both directions. The, uh, if we're looking at magnitude, uh, the magnitude of the move is going to be pretty similar. So amplitude is measured uh, from the inflection point, magnitude from the uh, lows or peaks. They are pretty similar. An inflection point is the point where the actual curve begins to change. Uh, and uh, that, uh, in this case, in the ideal cycle, it's going to be um, uh, at that same level. So the uh, f phases are very clear in here. And you can see this is just really theoretical. Um, as you see, the ideal rarely shows up uh, in real life. It gets close in many uh, of the cycle charts that we look at. But the fact that there, that there is a variance to the ideal is what gives fantastic messages. That's really what we look for, is how does it vary and what does it mean? And that's why there is a wealth of information that comes out of cycle charting because of these changes off of the ideal. 
Let's look at some of these definitions just so that we can get a sense for it. We'll come back to this chart in a second. Um, the amplitude is the strength of the rise or declining phase of a cycle. Um, uh, and re related to that, which I don't have on here, is the velocity, which is uh, the, the, the rate that it moves up versus the strength. Uh, and the magnitude is the uh, amount that it moves up off of the um, cycle bottom. The crest is the peak, the, the top of that cycle phase. And if you go way to the bottom, the, the trough is the low, the low price of a declining phase of the cycle. An ideal cycle is, as I showed you, theoretical cycles that have equal length and peak at exactly the same midpoint. The cycle bracket that you see us use is the tool that draws ideal cycles. I'll show you that in just a moment. That inflection point is where the cycle crosses the x-axis. That is where the curve begins to change. And the length of the cycle, or the period, is the measurement from the point that the cycle begins repeating itself. Uh, and that measurement is the distance between the troughs. And the, the, the phase is the position of a cycle at a particular point in time. Phases may be described as rising, declining, peaking, or bottoming. Let's go back here to that ideal cycle, and you can see. So you can, if you're interested in examining more of this, you could just take a picture or a screenshot of this uh, when you look at this ideal cycle, uh, and then go back for reference and, and uh, have a, a screenshot of this, and you can see the definitions uh, of basic. Uh, I'll, re I'll refer uh, to our cycle analysis and a little uh, workshop in a little bit. There are many, many more um, definitions in that glossary uh, that comes with that. So that is the definitions uh, around the very, very interesting, very basic cycle. And I say it's interesting because you'll start to see how these give you information as they begin to vary off of the ideal. So let's take a look at a chart. I picked a silver chart because it had some interesting cycle rhythms in there, but you probably looking at this chart have some challenge with seeing where those cycle rhythms are. Well, don't worry about that because it takes some time. Remember, I'm at this now for 45 years looking at cycle charts of which I have looked at, well, countless amounts of charts. So this is a basic candlestick chart. And there are rhythms in here because I'm used to looking at them that I can see. And there is one chart in here or two, one cycle or two that are close to the ideal, but not exactly perfect. Let's begin to examine this. As we move in our tool that we use, which helps us find cycle rhythms. So this silver chart now I've added cycle brackets. And the, the brackets are the ideal. You can see where if they were ideal, that the actual cycle would rally the same amount and decline the same amount, and it would peak right in the middle. There is actually one cycle in here that's fairly close to ideal, and that's this one right in here, where you see that it has rallied, and right about in the middle it peaked, and then came down to this point right over here. Now you will notice that there is a low that occurred here that is not exactly perfectly timed. Well, we'll talk a little bit more about that, but this tool helps us recognize the cycle rhythms that are in here. The money that flows in in the rising phase, the money that begins to flow out at this peaking phase, as the money does flow out significantly through the declining phase and then gets into the next bottoming phase. You can see that right there. And the cycle brackets, brackets help us understand these cycle rhythms in here. The money flow is money moves in and money moves out. Now there are many nuances in here and a lot of information that we're, that we're gonna get as we begin to move forward and develop the chart. That's what we really want to do is begin developing it now. So these are the ideal cycles. And what I'm going to bring now is these vertical lines that you see. These are cycle lines. And what they show you is where the actual cycles uh, aligned. And you'll see that they move um, 
on both sides of where that I where the ideal troughs were. They also don't peak at the ideal, and where they peak has important information. Uh, and I'll show you that as we develop this these uh, charts as we begin to move forward. So we went from the cycle bracket right over here to a point where we've identified the actual cycle rhythm right in there. Let, now let's get a little bit more information on here and you'll be able to see what we're talking about. So now what we're going to do is we're going to really identify these cycles. So what we have now is identified we have an average cycle of 22 days. And we've added in these actual cycles with putting in these cycle lines that show you exactly where the cycles are. Uh, and we've added in a projection. So that shows you the time necessary. We're projecting in time now about how much more time there is likely, assuming this cycle analysis is correct, and that this cycle right in here projects out in time for some number of days. Remember, we're looking at a six-month daily chart right over here of silver futures. And this says that where we took this picture of this chart right over here, there was some number of days left to go, probably about maybe eight or nine, before this cycle bottom comes. You'll notice we have these vertical lines right over here, the dashed ones. And this is a uh, telling you that based on the principle of var uh, variance, which uh, is uh, one of Hearst's eight principles, um, that uh, somewhere in this time fra uh, frame is the likeliest time that this cycle will bottom. And if that's the case, now you have some sense that this cycle that we're looking at here is negative and that the highest probabilities are that this, that this will resolve itself now moving to the downside again. Now there is a lot of information in here. Again, we labeled the rising phase in this cycle that is close to the ideal, the peaking phase right in here, the declining phase right there, and the bottoming phase right over here at the, the uh, trough. So, trough. So uh, the uh, bottom you can see clearly in each of these, and I'll show you a little bit uh, in, a, in a little bit how we get some help around that also. But you can see now that what we've done is we've changed this a little bit in that we were looking at this uh, pattern in here where we didn't have projections, we had some sense of the cycle, and because now we have timing, we can project out in time as I show you that. So we're going to begin to add more to this chart so you get a little better feel for what we're doing in here and how we get an understanding of these conditions. And now what we've done is we've added in um, the uh, support resistance areas so that we could now project in price. And we've made some notes around a word called translation. I did not have that in the glossary because what we're looking at now are things that are a bit more advanced as you move forward. So we've gone from basics to kind of intermediate in here just as we begin to build on this cycle. The important thing to see in here, and let me show you that, is that not only now are we projecting in time, but we have some zone in here that seems reasonable in price. If this low right over here was made in the middle of the cycle, then it's very likely that the low will be made below that level when the cycle uh, trough does hit, when we hit that low in there. So we, find, we project this range right in here using what we call swing high, swing low analysis. You can learn about that analysis by watching our videos on it in our video library. So this now we, we've done is projected in time and price. Now again, we want to learn more about why we're projecting to a lower level in here, and we're still looking at basics. I want you to see right over here this cycle. This is what we call a left-hand translation. This cycle rallied, and here's your rising phase, as you can see. Then it peaked, but note where it peaked. It peaked on the left side of the cycle. That is a left-hand translation. What that says is that there is a force that's causing it to, to peak early, which is a negative force. 
once the price trades below the cycle low, that support level right there, there is a lot of risk when it's completing the cycle that it's going to fall hard to the downside. I want you to note right over here, this is a similar condition that we have. A left-hand translation, a break of that support, and now a high probability that it will resolve on the downside to these levels in time and in price. Remember, we're projecting in time and in price in cycle analysis, and all of this information helps us. There are support levels right in here and here, and this major support level down over here. And how it acts and the time it takes to get down to this projected time frame of where this low is expected will give us a lot of information. If it happens to only finish way up over here, that might be telling us that there's a pretty decent rally coming. But you can see what we've done is begin to project over here the next rising phase in this cycle. Now you can see that this cycle here was pretty close to ideal. This one uh, less close because it was a left-hand translation, and that caused it to come down and move to a lower low. So again, I'm telling you, there is a ton of information that you get by the way these form. And you learn more and more about this the more that you do it. Let's advance this a little bit more and look now at how we get more information by adding in cycle uh, into the cycle analysis candlestick patterns and uh, a, um, a look at consolidation patterns. So you can see in each of these peaks right over here, this is an evening star, this is an evening star, this is a engulfing or bearish engulfing, this is a shooting star, and this is called a dark cloud cover. Each of these cycles, we got information that it was likely peaking. This was a very light, late peak and a right-hand translation, which is bullish, and it says there's not much time to fall and it will likely begin to move up again. The dark cloud cover hit and then it began to move down. Now, you can see the troughs in here, the hammer bottom, the hammer bottom, the morning star bottom right in here, all of those signaling those cycle lows right at the proper timing. We've also added in some consolidation patterns to help you with that information because as you got the break here, uh, it said to you it was likely to move down, you had a bear flag, and when that broke, it accelerated to the downside. Similar thing happened right here after the peak, and note on this uh, uh, strong cycle, you had a bull triangle that broke out to the upside, and in this cycle right over here, which is not complete, is now giving you the sense that there is a bearish um, consolidation pattern in that bear flag that's forming and that when it's done it likely will resolve to the downside again. So you can see the fantastic amount of information that we have in here as we just scroll our way back and start out with just the basic chart and then begin to move forward and add all of this information to help us understand and project as we begin to move forward. That is the basic look at how we form our charts and the type of information we put in there. Essentially what we've done is showed you a way to visually see cash flow as money moves in and money moves out and the strength and weakness conditions that you can see as we look at that which is really the very, very basics of cycle analysis that we just showed you. Actually, psychoanalysis is quite complex, and there are many nuances, uh, and there are many other indicators that we use and add in to our analysis, uh, some, of course, which we have shown our members, and many of you have seen that uh, as we add in momentum uh, indicators that we have worked very hard to develop uh, and ways for us to really understand how the money flow and inertia in the markets is uh, very visible. Even when we do this analysis and the, the, the projection that we have is proving not to be correct, that is also important information because it really has us looking at what is changing. When something is not going as the normal cyclic movement would have it doing, then there is another force acting on it 
and that really has us looking very hard at uh, how we can get a better understanding for the conditions that are going on. So when it's not working, it's also very valuable information. So I've done this analysis on hundreds of thousands of charts. Maybe it's over a million. And I have a very trained eye after doing this for 45 years. I did spend two hours writing a workshop uh, that uh, can help you a lot. It took me uh, six months to produce and do all the recordings, uh, 22, 20 um, uh, video modules that uh, have uh, 15 hours plus of information on there. So if you're interested in learning more about using cycle analysis, please do look at uh, our workshop. Uh, and I think it will give you a uh, just a whole new way that you're going to look at charts. I'm telling you, when you begin to use cycle analysis, you will never look at charts the same way. Uh, that's uh, our entire team here at Slim uh, does that. Uh, uh, RV, uh, Matt, we're very, very well attuned to that and how we add in so much more uh, into our analysis. So I really encourage you to go to uh, AskSlim.com and uh, look uh, uh, at our navigation tab under workshops. And there's a video over there. It will explain more to you. The whole table of contents is there. And uh, you will uh, have a, uh, an opportunity to learn more uh, about what we offer in that regard. I hope this was incredibly informative to you and you enjoyed this look at cycle analysis basics and the way that we begin to build charts uh, using this very unique uh, analytical method. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next segment.